In this video, we're gonna show you how to save a ton of space and have infinite upload storage for all your teacher recorded videos. Let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome to Mr. Cook's Corner, Education for Educators. This channel is all about helping teachers like you grow in your craft. If it's your first time watching, welcome aboard. Please consider subscribing if you enjoy what you see today. Now, like I was talking about earlier, we're in charge of filming a lot of teacher tutorials, videos, all kinds of different uploads with the distance learning that's being required of us nowadays. However, a lot of us are dropping them into Google Drive and it's taken up a ton of space. Most of us only have a 15 gigabyte max, and although it will take a little bit of time to get there, you are gonna run out sooner or later. So, insert YouTube. With a YouTube account, it's something that you can easily create and you have unlimited storage with it. So, I wanna show you today really quickly just how to do that. So the first thing you need is a finished video, and depending on what you're doing, that could come from a number of places. Most teachers are gonna be on their computer screen recording things for students, so you're gonna need something like Screencastify or Loom. And if you're wondering which one you should choose, I got a video for you right up here. However, you may just be recording yourself talking, and in that case, you could just use your cell phone. Regardless, YouTube is open to tons of different formats, and the way you're recording is more than likely acceptable. So let's go ahead and get that video ready first. So the next thing that you're gonna need is a YouTube account. Most of you already have this, but if not, you can use your school address. Now some schools actually put that on lock, and if so, that's okay. All you're gonna need to do is just create a Gmail account. I'd make one that's identifiable and easy to use because it is gonna be seen by your students, but it is also free and it doesn't take a lot of time. All right, it's time to start uploading. But one thing I wanna point out is that if you're doing a cell phone video, you can use the YouTube mobile app to upload in the exact same way that I'm about to show you on the desktop. All right, so in order to upload, all we have to really do is drag and drop. Let me show you how it works. Okay, this is a fairly simple process and it's pretty quick too. In the top right corner, all you wanna look for is the little camera button that says create. You're gonna click it and you're gonna click upload video. If it's your first time to create a video, it's gonna ask you to get started. You click get started and choose use your name. It's gonna want you to upload a picture, answer a few questions, but you don't have to do that part. You can just click on setup later. Once you've done that the first time, you don't ever have to do that again. So you'll just click on the create button, click on upload video, and then your upload box appears. You can either drag and drop or you can choose a file. Once you find the file that you like, you just click on it, hit open, and then the process begins. Okay, so while the video is uploading, and depending on how long the video is, it may take a little bit of time, we're gonna take a look at some settings that you need to make sure are in place in order for you to protect your privacy. Whenever you upload a video, this is the screen that you're going to see. You do need to give it a title, but you don't have to give it a description. That's completely up to you. You'll then choose a thumbnail and a playlist if you want to. But one thing you have to do, it's required, is to choose whether it's made for kids. It's because of the COPPA Act, it's for children's privacy. As long as students are going to watch it, you have to click yes. That doesn't mean anything bad, it just says that kids are going to be watching your video. Once you do that, you'll hit next. Here's where you can add some elements, and this is mainly for people who do YouTube content like myself. You're not going to use this as a teacher, so you can always just hit next. Here's the important part, the visibility. You've got three options here. Private means that only you can see the video or someone else you specifically share it with. Public means anybody can find your video. It's not just watch it. Anybody can search and find your videos. I do not recommend you choosing that. The one that I always go with is unlisted. That means anyone with the link can watch it. You're gonna have a link over here to share when everything's done. And as long as you set it to unlisted, the only people that will be able to see it are those you share the link with. Okay, you've got the video uploaded. Now I wanna show you really quickly how to manage these videos in case you ever want to delete them, change the settings of them, or anything like that. We wanna make sure you can get in and out of your video selections. Whenever you need to manage your videos, you're gonna go into YouTube Studio, and it's in the top right corner. When you go to YouTube, you just click on your icon, and right down here is YouTube Studio. Once you're in YouTube Studio, this is your dashboard, and you're gonna click on Videos. Now YouTube has incorporated a lot of powerful tools for content creators. You don't really need to mess with any of that. All you really need to know is that this is the video tab and here is where all your videos are going to be listed. In order to make any edits or to delete, you just hover over the video and these choices will pop up. The pencil lets you go back in and edit the details. The second button is for analytics, you don't need that. The third button is for comments, you don't need that. 
The fourth button is to see the video on YouTube. And this last button over here, the three dots, gives you some options, including getting the link to share, downloading it again if you need to, and deleting it forever. So to permanently delete a video, there's two ways to do it. You either click the checkbox, and then go to more actions and hit delete forever, or you go to the three dots and click delete forever. They make you click, I understand that deleting is permanent, because once you delete it, it doesn't go to a recycling bin where you can retrieve it later, it's gone. So if you're gonna delete it, make sure that you mean it. Okay, quick bonus tip. You know how when you come across some of my videos and you haven't actually seen it, but it's got a cool little picture in front, kind of like this? Yeah, that's called a thumbnail. And what you can do is you can set yourself up with a custom thumbnail, instead of having it just be a random picture of your face kind of going, or whatever it is that you're recording at the time. Let's get you set up with that super quick. So the two quickest way to do this is either with PowerPoint or Google Slides or something awesome like Canva. If you need to learn how to use Canva, I've got a video link up top. Check that out right now. But to show the super abbreviated version, you just create a design, choose a thumbnail. From here, you use all the awesome Canva tools to design your picture. Then you just download it. And from here, you'll insert it into your YouTube video. If you don't want to use an awesome free tool like Canva, and honestly, I'd question you as to why that is, you can always go to Google Slides or PowerPoint, open up a new project, decorate it however you want, and then just go to File, Download, and either choose JPEG or PNG. It does the exact same thing as Canva, but without all the awesome options. Once you have your picture ready to go, you're going to go back to YouTube and open your YouTube studio. And next to your video, you're going to click the pencil button for details. You'll notice it looks just like how we had it earlier. It's got the title and the description, and right below that is the thumbnail. You can also find this when you first upload your video. The same screen will pop up. Now, if you've never uploaded a custom thumbnail to YouTube before, you do have to jump through one hoop. It's going to say, verify your count. And all you need to do to verify your count is click on verify, and from there, they're gonna ask for a phone number and they will text you a code. And all you have to do is verify the text number and you're in. Now that you're verified, you can go back to the thumbnail and click on upload. And then once you choose the file that you like, it's set and you just click save. And there it is. Now, instead of having a random screenshot of your video, your students will see a custom thumbnail. Like always, we got tons more where that came from. Go ahead and check out some of these videos right here and keep your adventure going. In the meantime, you'll find us at mrcookscorner.com. We're all over social media as well. And we'll see you next time at Mr. Cook's Corner. Bye.